Now for me, one of the best analogies I could use to describe Google's latest Chromebook Pixel is one of a, a super powerful sports car that has been completely stripped apart from any excess weight. And by doing that, now you have a very powerful yet light piece of hardware that can really run circles around anything else in its category. But the new Pixel is almost too simple. It's essentially a glorified tablet with a completely jaw-dropping display that is very difficult to stop staring at. But the real question here is, is this thing really worth the $1,000 dollar price tag that it comes with. And really at that price point, you have so many great Ultrabooks to choose from, whether they be based on Mac OS X or Windows. And based on my experience after using this laptop for a couple of weeks now, I'm here to share my experiences with the Pixel and really determine whether it's worth that exceedingly high price tag. Now back in 2013, Google introduced the first Chromebook Pixel. It was more of a demonstration of what is possible if you put a lot of money in one machine that runs a very simple operating system. And since that time, there's been a whole bunch of different Chromebooks from other manufacturers such as Acer, Samsung, Toshiba, it has really been established with a tremendous amount of success, especially for people that are just looking for a simple web browsing based PC. And even though the price has gone down quite a bit from the original Pixel at around $1,000 for the base model of the 2015 edition, it still costs about three times more than the best Chromebooks you can get from the popular manufacturers. Now, in my opinion, uh, since Google is charging an obscene amount of money for this laptop that has a very limited operating system, you're definitely going to have to produce something that stands out from the crowd and going to make the purchase of this item worthwhile. And after using it for a couple of weeks now, despite many limitations that we'll talk about, and I have to say that there are some things that I really do like about this computer and I can even see why they're charging this amount of money right now. Now, just to illustrate my point, some consider Apple's MacBook lineup of computers to be the benchmark for laptops that exemplify minimalistic functional design with outstanding a level of build quality and fit and finish. And that kind of feeling you get from using them uh, definitely makes you consider why they're charging such a higher premium compared to most other Windows-based laptops and other cheaper laptops you can find in the market. And when I first opened up the Chromebook Pixel, I was super impressed of the level of fit and finish and the minimalistic design that we really only encounter from Apple-based products. I've never really experienced a computer besides those MacBooks, the kind of untangible sensation that you're using something that's uh, incredibly well made and incredibly well thought out. It's really hard to justify in pictures or video. You really have to experience the Pixel in real life to see what I'm on about. Now, the physical materials that make up the Chromebook are very similar to the MacBooks. They're both made out of a, a aluminum grade construction, unibody design. Additionally, all the corners and edges are gradually rounded off, which makes this thing very comfortable to use. And it's fairly difficult to achieve these rounded off edges, especially in a CNC process. Moving on, another great thing about the Pixel is that it has an absolutely excellent keyboard and trackpad combination. The keyboard itself is very similar in terms of layout and feel compared to the ones that you would find in a MacBook. They're both LED backlit and they both have the same amount of key track so if you're used to those kind of ultrabooks, you'll be perfectly comfortable on using this keyboard and I found no complaints whatsoever. But if you look closely, there are a little bit of minor modifications uh, to this keyboard. If you take a look at the bottom portion, you can see that the control and alt keys are extended for uh, ease of use, as well as the where the caps lock key would go, you have a dedicated search button, which is primarily used to search for files on your computer or even surf the web using Google. Take a look at the trackpad itself. It is uh, very similar to one you would find in a MacBook. It's etched glass. It also has that conventional hinge system that you would find in the uh, MacBook Air. And it's a very responsive trackpad that has multi-touch capabilities, so you'll feel right at home using it. Now, even though this is a fairly simple laptop, you still have a decent amount of connectivity options. You have two USB 3 Type A ports, a full-size SD card slot reader, which is excellent for expanding your internal memory. And you could even get one of those flush mount SD cards to uh, get higher storage capacities because there's not a lot of options in terms of internal flash memory. Furthermore, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone and microphone jack, as well as a 720p front facing webcam. But probably one of the most important connections you'll find on this computer is two USB type C connections on both the right and left side of the laptop. And this serves as multiple different functions. The cool thing about USB type C is that it can transfer power, uh, even fast charge capability, 
capabilities. It can be used, of course, as a USB connection, up to five gigabits per second data transferring speeds. You can also use it as a display interface, whether you're using it for HDMI, VGA, or DisplayPort connectivity. So you can uh, even output 4K using Type-C. And uh, even though this has all these capabilities for early adopters, they're going to have to definitely get a lot of different adapters, which are expensive right now because USB Type-C is a kind of a new standard right now. But of course, down the road, USB Type-C is going to be the mainstream standards and you have all these devices to connect to. And this laptop is ready for that connectivity. Now, if you were to ask me right now, what was my favorite feature about this new Chromebook Pixel? I would definitely have to say the display. Even though I've encountered other displays that have higher resolution and perhaps even better color accuracy. But every time I looked at the display and uh, whether I was watching movies or consuming media or writing a report or anything like that, it was an absolutely pleasure to use the display on this laptop. And I can really see why Google is charging about a thousand dollars for the base model because to get an IPS 2560 by 1700 display is going to be expensive. Display manufacturers typically don't make a three to two aspect ratio screen, especially for these low volume Chromebook pixel computers. And at that uh, resolution and aspect ratio, it's really amazing for consuming articles and web pages because the web is kind of designed more square than widescreen. It's fantastic for uh, browsing the web. Now, when you are watching a video stuff in HD, because most of uh, video stuff is in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You are going to find large bars on the top and bottom of the display, but it's not too bad. I consumed a lot of different video content and indeed a lot of movies, and I, I didn't really mind the bars at all. Furthermore, because it's an IPS display, the viewing angles are absolutely sensational. The quality of this panel is, I think, even better than uh, the MacBook Pro with the Retina display, and that's pretty high praise. So if you really want to start justifying the cost of this computer, you can definitely mention that the majority of the cost is definitely going into this brilliant display. Now moving forward, internally the Pixel is fairly well equipped. It has the latest generation Core i5 Broadwell processor, that's the 5200U on this particular base model, which is a dual core processor, and it has 8 gigabytes of DDR3, which is definitely going to make things very snappy and extremely responsive because it's just using a simple Chrome OS operating system. And to illustrate this point, when I first opened up the computer and turned it on, it literally took five seconds to go from completely shut down to the first time that you've ever boot into the lock screen. And the setup process for Chrome OS was very fast as well. And just to illustrate my point further, if you take a look at the MacBook Air, which is a fast computer in its own right, that computer takes about 15 seconds to boot up and go into the lock screen. So a huge night and day difference between the Chromebook Pixel and a conventionally fast Ultrabook. Now moving forward, one of the cool things about the Chromebook Pixel is that when the lid is closed, you can double tap on the LED strip light and get a indication of how much juice is left on your battery. Very handy and convenient there. And talking about the battery life specifically, this has a 59 watt hour lithium polymer battery, which is fairly large and uh, it's definitely going to deliver some pretty decent battery performance. And because it's running uh, the new Broadwell CPUs, which are very power efficient and a very light operating system, you're definitely going to get over 12 hours of usage. In my almost uh, 10 days with the computer, I found myself averaging about 12 hour 45 minutes, which is certainly darn impressive and up there with uh, the best computers in terms of battery endurance tests. So definitely impressive to see. Now, just to give you guys a final analysis on the Chromebook Pixel, we're just going to do a pros and cons list in order to find out if the strengths outweigh the weaknesses. Now, we'll start with the things that I didn't like about the Pixel. Firstly, it's very limited in terms of capabilities. It, because it's running the Chrome OS operating system, which basically just has an internet browser installed. So it's almost simple to a uh, fault. Furthermore, in terms of third-party applications, you're really limited to only Chrome-based apps as well as some Android-based applications. So uh, for the most part, you're not going to be doing any kind of serious computing on this machine. Furthermore, I know it's a cloud-based computer, but having only 32 and 64 gigabyte options is uh, fairly small, especially these days with high capacity 
SSD flash storage being fairly cheap and especially for this high premium dollar. And last but not least is going to be that really high end price. Even though it's come down from the previous generation Pixel, I think even at $1,000 for the base model, that's still too much for a computer that has very limited options and certainly can't be used as a main computer. Now looking at the stuff that I did like about the Pixel, firstly I have to mention that it is incredibly well made, very well built and the fit and finish is up there with some of the best notebooks that you'll find out there. Secondly, you have a fantastic backlit keyboard as well as a great trackpad that is very easy to use. Now, as mentioned before, I'm in absolutely love with this brilliant display. Because of its high resolution and its overall form factor, it's fantastic for browsing the web. And to me, I think this is probably one of the best notebook displays you can get in the market. Furthermore, even though the OS is very limited, coupled with the Broadwell-based CPU, this is a very fast notebook that has probably one of the fastest web browsing and boot up times available on any other computer. Also, I do like the, the fact that this thing does have two USB Type-C connections. Even though that's a fairly new standard, it's certainly going to be future-proof connectivity for later on down the road. And uh, last but not least is the great battery performance. Not only is this excellent in terms of uh, doing any kind of web browsing activity, but it also has that fast charging capabilities. You can go from zero to 100% in just about an hour and a half. But on that, guys, that's really it. Definitely let me know what you guys think of the Google Chrome book pixel do you think it's right for you uh, is there somebody out there would actually buy and pay about a thousand dollars for an essentially a really nice uh, Chromebook uh, I could definitely consider myself using this thing as a dedicated laptop because for me a laptop is just basically a tool to, to do web browsing with and uh, when I do any kind of serious work I do it on the desktop anyways but alongside that I could see that there are a ton of limitations and uh, it's a computer that is hard justifying that high-end price tag when you you consider all of the capabilities. Now, if you haven't done so already, we actually have a couple of different comparisons comparing this thing to uh, the latest generation laptops that are available right now. So definitely check out our channel for more information. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for your support. We'll see you later. Take care.